animal was coming right at us. Come hell or high water, we were going to get those animals off site and save them. You don't have time to doubt. You just get out there and do it. They're just in a strange place. They get unpredictable. There was only so much room on the ark. There's 15,000 alligators back there. He gets a hold of you. There's all kinds of scenarios. If he starts fighting and struggling and pulling and rolling, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, from the Weather Channel, it's Animal Storm Stories. September 13th, 2004, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Thousands of residents monitor the path of Hurricane Ivan as it moves toward the Gulf. They aren't taking any chances after witnessing two hurricanes in Florida in the last month, Charlie and Francis. Enough is enough already. People are getting sick and tired of hurricanes. 38-year-old news photographer Brad Gunther is gearing up to cover this third hurricane for WKRG-TV. He expects to see plenty of action in Gulf Shores, which is located directly on the water, 36 miles southeast of Mobile. We pack what we call hurricane kits. Extra changes of clothing, rain gear for ourselves and our cameras, duct tape, garbage bags. Others hope to avoid seeing any action from Ivan. Patty Hall is director of the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo, a 17-acre non-profit attraction. Because the zoo sits one mile from the ocean, Hall must evacuate most of the 280 animals that live there. You really don't want to do that to the animals unless you positively have to. They depend solely on us for their livelihood, for their health, their well-being. Okay. In her seven years of running the zoo, this is the first time Hall has done such a large-scale move. But her love for animals makes it worth the extra work take the chance of safely removing them or leaving them there where they're going to drown a horrible death. There's not a question in your mind. Paul's plan is a drastic one. It involves moving the animals about 20 miles inland onto her own property. Patty and her husband David of 23 years chose these 10 acres for a purpose. When we bought this property, we always had it in mind. In the event of a hurricane, this is where the animals will come. Patty has experienced help. Head zookeeper Cindy Johnson has worked at Gulf Coast Zoo for five years now. She loves interacting with the animals up close. She's doing all right. A lot better than she was yesterday. A lot of your bigger zoos, uh, you're not allowed to do hands-on with animals. We raise a lot of animals on our own. 42-year-old facility manager Rusty Gilbert started at Gulf Coast Zoo when it opened 15 years ago. He even helped build most of the exhibits. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication. Um, it's got to be in your heart more than anything. So the trailer will just be sitting there. We can open little hatches. and. Well, yeah, that sounds real good because we were talking about there's no way. You we'll can't get, put the primates in the cat center. Paul and her staff videotaped the moving experience as a training video for future hurricanes. The team must work fast. By late afternoon, Ivan is expected to make landfall in less than 72 hours. It's a dangerous Category 5 with winds more than 150 miles an hour. While preparing cages and animal food, the staff borrows two cattle trucks from a local company to move the animals. Some cannot be sedated for transport and will have to remain at the zoo. They include 25 fallow deer, two emus, an ostrich, and a favorite zoo attraction, Chucky, an 11-foot, 1,000-pound alligator. He's never been anywhere but the zoo for 15 years. The staff knows that moving can be a frightening experience for the animals, so Patty gives her crew a pep talk before starting. I want everybody to take very deep breaths and lower your body energy because these animals can pick up on it. They begin with the largest animal, a 1,200-pound Tibetan yak named Harry. Always conscious of the animal's well-being, Paul wants to avoid tranquilizing Harry. Probably the most stressful time is when you have to sedate an animal. Um, there's always that 
10% chance that that animal is not going to come out of the sedation. Paul has another idea. She decides to coax the yak onto the truck with some bread. Good old Harry, if you show him a bag of bread, he will follow you for miles. After an hour, Harry is corralled inside one of the trucks. It takes about another hour to secure his mate, Emma. Hold your hands out like this, Alan. With night approaching, Paul decides to wait for first light to tackle the rest of the move. I didn't even think about it. We got there at 530 and had a staff meeting with everyone and gave everybody their marching orders. You are about to undertake one of the biggest adventures that you are ever going to experience in your entire life. I guarantee you all. Some animals are more reluctant to leave than others. The Audads are doing everything they can to escape. They don't realize you're trying to help them. They think you're trying to hurt them. By 9 a.m., the crew handles the big cats some of which require sedation. Zoo manager Rusty Gilbert is extra cautious with a 600-pound lion named Audrey. She's an African lion. Uh, she's pretty old, too. She's 12, 13 years old, and uh, she's the only one that really scares me. She's not a cat to play with. Rusty tranquilizes the animals whenever it's necessary, and they recognize him for it. When they see me walk up, they, they kind of just fringe back and say, oh, here comes that guy with that gun again. Rusty engages Cindy Johnson for help. It's all right, baby girl. I don't know if it hit her. I don't know if it hit her. Is it, 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 it stuck in her? Yeah, it's in her. 30 minutes later, the big cat is down for the move. It is very painful for people that spend their life taking care of these animals to have to put them through that, but we're saving their life. Once the other big cats are tranquilized, Cindy and Rusty take a moment to inspect them. By 12 p.m., Ivan churns closer to shore with an expected arrival in about 38 hours. One by one, the rest of the animals are captured and loaded on board the trucks. Good job, good kid. Good kid. By the following morning, more than 200 exotic animals have been moved into temporary cages and shipped up to Patty Hall's 10-acre property. Some dangerous animals remain caged on the trucks to ride out the hurricane. Mentally, these animals have to be stimulated uh, to keep them from over-grooming or, or having behavioral problems. Anything to keep their mind occupied. By 7.30 p.m., the entire move is completed. While Chucky the alligator and other animals waited out at the zoo, Patty and her staff hunkered down at her house. Now downgraded to a powerful Category 3, Ivan makes landfall in Gulf Shores about 2 a.m. Winds near 130 miles per hour snap tree limbs and down power lines. My biggest fear that the doors would open or the trailer would be blown open and we'd have exotic animals running through this area. During the next several hours, Patty and her crew keep a watchful eye on the animals as Ivan rages. By mid-morning, the hurricane leaves Gulf Shores and moves northeast through the state. Patty and her team return to the zoo to check on the 30 animals that had to remain behind. The zoo is in ruins, destroyed by a 10-foot ocean surge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
you know, it, it's just so hard to understand what the forces of water can do to an area. Five out of 30 animals left behind are now dead. And one survivor is missing from his exhibit. Chucky was nowhere to be found. He could have been anywhere. He could have been 10 miles away. All he'd have to do is just bite your foot and just slide back in the water and that's it and he's got a meal. Friday, September 17th, 2004. Hurricane Ivan has pounded the community of Gulf Shores, Alabama. Several hundred animals have been evacuated from the local Gulf Coast Zoo. They are being temporarily housed about 20 miles away at the home of zoo director Patty Hall. We look like the Beverly Hillbillies. I mean, we had 11 domestic dogs, 9 domestic cats, 265 exotic animals, and I'm fond of saying, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> you know? Some of the animals that had to ride out the hurricane at the zoo are now missing, including 17 deer. But Patty and her staff are most concerned over the whereabouts of an 11-foot alligator named Chucky. Chucky was nowhere to be found. His exhibit is in one of the lowest lying areas of the zoo, where we had anywhere from 10 to 12 feet of water. During the hurricane, the 1,000-pound alligator floated over his 8-foot fence and swam away. As the day progresses, temperatures climb into the 90s. The intense heat becomes a problem for the staff and the animals. It got brutally hot, and we pumped water out of our back pond and put it over the 18-wheeler. We had these cats in a, um, in a tractor trailer rig, and it's hot, probably 100 degrees or so in there. Audrey's all right. With the zoo in ruins and nowhere else to house the animals, employees can only try to keep them comfortable. The big cats still need to be fed, and that job is left to Cindy Johnson and Rusty Gilbert. Audrey, the 600-pound lion, is extremely stressed. She is giving the team a hard time. She would growl and scream and yell and carry on. I mean, just the noises alone was enough to get nightmares. Not all of the animals are confined to cages. Patty Hall allows two baby Bengal tigers to stay in her house. Three-month-old Raja and his sister, Rane. Rane is a lot of predator instincts. She loves to uh, sneak up behind you and bite you in the rear. Raja is a typical man. He's lazy, he likes to whine, and he passes gas a lot. <laughs> the twin cubs get a chance to cool off in Hall's swimming pool with head zookeeper Cindy Johnson. Another missing animal could be taking a swim almost anywhere in town, Chucky. The national media pick up the story. We mean alligators. Miles, hello to you. And yes, the one particular one we're talking about is Chucky the alligator. Chucky is... Word started spreading throughout the news community there that Chucky was on the loose. We got a real kick out of how, you know, Chucky sort of became the media darling of the storm. These guys are, I contracted Alligator Alley. Hall fields dozens of calls from those wanting to help. Hello. Four days after Chucky went missing, Patty gets a call from a group of alligator wrestlers in Orlando. Hello. They told me that they could catch Chucky within three days, and I sort of laughed because they didn't know the area, they didn't know the flooding. Nonetheless, the three alligator experts show up at Gulf Coast Zoo. One of them is 55-year-old Tim Williams. Williams is the self-proclaimed Dean of Gator Wrestling at an Orlando theme park called Gatorland. I've been wrestling alligators about 30 years, and I've gotten to a point in my life where I, I'm old enough to know better, so I teach other people to do it. When we get them, mm -hmm. I'm saying when. Okay, we're I'm, very I'm, optimistic. I like, I'd be we're optimistic. very optimistic. 33-year-old Flavio Morrissey is helping Williams hunt Chucky. Catching alligator is the easiest thing to do. It's finding the alligator to catch him. That's the hard part. 
the best time to go look for them is at night. Uh, their eyes glow red. Plus, they don't see you as well. At nightfall, the Gatorland team comes up with a plan for finding Chucky. We took a stick and just started drawing it in the sand. Look kind of like the old Western movies, you know, the plan of attack on the, on the fort. Armed with headlamps, noose poles, and rope, they hike into the swamp next door to the zoo, joined by a few local gator hunters. It was just tangled with small branches. Trees were falling over the place. The surge had washed in all these fish and eels, and it, and it was smelly, and uh, the mud, and it, it was just nasty. Flavio crosses the canal on a fallen tree. William stays behind and uses his alligator call to attract Chucky. Did a little gator grunt, which is easy. Mm, mm, mm. Flavio shines a light into the black water, and something catches his eye. I saw a frog, and it dawned on me I'm in a different area, so it's a different species of frog that I don't normally see. He was bending down to catch this frog, and he looked up, and there was Chucky sitting right there by him in the water. He could have easily have taken me out if he wanted to, because I was right next to him. I mean, 16, 18 inches away. Flavio tries to hook Chucky around the snout, but his noose is too small. When I tried to cinch the rope on him, I realized how big his jaws were. I mean, right here, just huge... Chucky splashes away into the murky swamp. Minutes later, Flavio spots something moving in the water next to Tim Williams. He's by your feet. And I'm like, where? And he went, by your feet. Williams quickly prepares his rope for the catch. I made a huge noose, bigger than I've ever made in my life. I'm thinking, man, this guy, we're going to try our best. He gets a rope on Chucky. But separated from the group on the other side of the canal, Williams realizes he's got a thousand pounds of nervous gator to handle, alone. I sat down on the rope and buried my feet in the ground and said, God, I hope he doesn't start fighting because there's no way I can hold this guy. September 21st, 2004. In a marsh in Gulf Shores, Alabama, Tim Williams struggles to capture an 11-foot alligator named Chucky. The 1,000-pound reptile escaped from Gulf Coast Zoo five days earlier during Hurricane Ivan. If the rope comes off now, uh, we may not ever see him again. A team of gator experts leaps into action to haul the alligator onto the banks. Chucky spent a good two minutes of really struggling, and then he just relaxed. We just went, <sighs> we got him. The first thing went through everybody's mind is, how are we going to get this big son of a gun out of the swamp? Flavio Morrissey uses his cell phone to call zoo director Patty Hall for help. She sends in the cavalry, made up of local police officers and the National Guard. It took about 20 guys to pull him through this thicket, trying to make it as easy as possible for, for Chucky. The local news gets word of Chucky's capture, and photographer Brad Gunther videotapes the action. Being a news photographer, it reminded me eerily of a major crime scene. Chucky is pulled for a quarter mile through the swamp and returned to the zoo, where he is released in a temporary pen. The Gulf Coast Zoo needed a ray of sunshine. Those folks were so happy to have Chucky back. Chucky came home! Yay. The next day, Patty and her staff begin the real work, preparing the zoo for the return of all 265 animals. Cages are rebuilt. Fallen trees are bulldozed away, and the ground is sprayed with bleach to kill any bacteria. Six days after fleeing from Ivan, the animals are transported back home. You can just look in their eyes if they can smell what seems normal to them. Harry, the 1,200-pound yak, settles in, while baby cubs Raja and Rane seem oblivious to their adventure. Paul has her staff to thank for the success of the operation. 
they all rose to the occasion and the whole purpose of what these people were doing it for was one purpose and that was the animals and as for chucky he's like pig in mud right now he is so happy to be home one of the greatest dangers wild animals face after a hurricane the answer when animal storm stories continues so what are the greatest dangers wild animals face after a hurricane? Like people, animals' homes are also destroyed when a hurricane rips through an area, damaging entire forests and swamps. Replacement trees may take years to grow, displacing the animals that once lived there. Standing water can cause a high level of bacteria and disease that threaten wildlife. Floating debris can trap animals or lead to deadly injuries. For Animal Storm Stories, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next.